Resuming debate, the Honorable Member for Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'll be splitting my time with the member for Trois Rivières. Uh, so despite the Prime Minister's clear campaign promises to move quickly to fix our marijuana laws and stop the senseless arrest for simple possession, the government has spent the last six or seven months doing nothing. They announced a timeline for few future action in New York, but that action is at least a year away. Now, I'm hearing from a broad range of constituents in Anaimo Ladysmith who are refused by the government's messages on marijuana. So here's a nine-part list on uh, who's affected by leaving marijuana regulations uncertain. First, judges. Here's uh, Justice Selkirk from the Ontario Court of Justice uh, just in December. He said, I quote, I recall distinctly the Prime Minister in the House of Commons saying it's going to be legalized. I'm not going to be the last judge in the country to convict somebody of simple possession of marijuana. You can't have the Prime Minister announcing it's going to be legalized and then stand up and prosecute it. It just can't happen. It's a ludicrous situation. Ludicrous. End quote. My second category, taxpayers, because the government spends three to four million dollars annually prosecuting simple possession cases. New Democrats believe it's irresponsible to allow police and court resources to be wasted this way, creating new criminal records for something that the government imminently plans to legalize. Police have better things to do. The third category are legal commercial producers. There are 60 licensed uh, uh, commercial businesses across Canada. One of them, Tilray, is in my riding. They have done everything the government has asked them to do. They have jumped through uh, incredible hoops. They have security, investment, ins inspections. Uh, um, it's, a, it's a very, very tightly regulated industry. They have invested in good faith, but they're not sure what will be the conditions for further investment. Um, they are in an insecure business environment. The fourth category are legal personal production license holders. Again, the Conservatives made a whole lot of changes, a lot of prosecutions over the last 10 years, an uncertain place. These people are, are growing uh, for medical marijuana legally, but they don't know how solid the ground is on which they stand. It's a problem. There's another broad group affected in my community, those with illegal dispensaries in their region. These are not licensed under the current law. So the fifth category is local governments who are left scrambling to address the jurisdictional hole left by the lack of federal leadership on the illegal dispensary issue. The sixth is customers who are reliant on the supply. Um, they may well have been prescribed this medically. They believe it's a legitimate source they can rely on. They are discombobulated by ad hoc police raids and interruption of what might be a prescribed supply for them. It creates anxiety. The seventh category uh, affected um, are uh, neighboring businesses affected by these illegal dispensaries. They're alarmed by changes in their neighborhood, outdoor smoking, a different clientele mix. Uh, then an IMO Chamber of Commerce representatives are complaining to me about this, about the lack of federal leadership. There's a lot of work to do on this file. The eighth um, category for me is regions that are missing out on the benefits from legal commercial medical marijuana growers. Tilray and my riding is one such success story. They added 140 employees in 13 months. Operating impacts are estimated to grow from 13 million to 88 million in our region if the government can get ahead and plan actually what is this industry going to look like. We're waiting for leadership. And finally, and this is the focus of today's debate, thousands of mostly young adults who will have criminal records for the rest of their lives because the Prime Minister did not respect his promise to legalize marijuana as soon as he took office. Having a criminal record for marijuana possession has big consequences. It can impede your travel, your future work opportunities. Uh, and this is, again, the focus of today's debate. It's unfair to impose criminal records on citizens when we're told that this will be a legal drug in less than two years. It's unfair and it costs everybody. So one of the sets of costs, you know, 18 months under a liberal government of needless arrests and wasteful trials are tying up our police and our courts. The Justice Department has confirmed it will cost taxpayers as much as $4 million a year. 
In 2014, there were 60,000, almost 60,000 marijuana possession charges. And StatsCan says that is 3% of all arrests in our country. In 2013, possession of cannabis accounted for 54% of all police-reported drug crime. Now, if police stopped prosecuting young adults, then resources could be focused on dealers and organized crime. In my city, Nanaimo, there is a fentanyl crisis that is tying up firefighters, police, health responders, uh, our hospitals. It's creating deaths. This is a serious problem, and we're not getting the action we need on it. There were 17 fentanyl-related deaths in 2014 in our island health region, uh, 22 in 2015, and nine in just the first three months of this year. The Island Health Medical Health Officer for my region on Vancouver Island, Dr. Paul Hasselbach, says that Nanaimo's fentanyl overdose rate is higher than the provincial average. Three in just the first nine months, nine in just the first three months of this year. It's, it's, it's something we really should be focusing on instead of criminalizing simple possession of marijuana. This follows a train of liberal failures. In 1969, a royal commission said that the cost to young individuals were not justified. And it said back then in 69, get rid of prohibition for personal use. Liberals ignored the recommendation. New Democrats introduced a bill. It was not supported by the House. In 2002, a Senate report said the true damage to society of marijuana was felt through the side effects of criminal penalties. Again, no action. The Liberals in 2009 voted to support Bill C-15, a conservative initiative to impose mandatory minimums for cannabis-related offenses. The Liberal and Conservative governments have consecutively failed to keep marijuana out of the hands of young people, and giving out criminal records has not helped. So we want to see the government make a difference on the ground right now, make a difference in people's lives. As the Liberal Health Minister said quite rightly, it is impossible to arrest our way out of the situation. And so, I think the government should support the New Democrat motion. They should immediately decriminalize simple possession while they draft laws to legalize marijuana. Yes, learn from Washington and Colorado. Yes, tackle edibles and labeling and dosage control. Do all those things. But while you do that long extended work, make a difference right now in the lives of Canadians. New Democrats believe it's irresponsible to allow the valuable resources of police and courts to be wasted, creating new criminal records for something the government imminently plans to legalize. We will continue to push for the government to take common sense steps, such as decriminalizing simple possession of marijuana, while the government develops a comprehensive plan and a timeline to legalize it. Thank you. Uh, questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Surrey Centre. Thank you. I uh, want to commend uh, the member opposite. Um, I come also from the land of BC Bud and therefore uh, would like to get it legalized, regulated and licensed. Uh, however, I wanted to ask how can we do something on the right hand without knowing what's happening on the left? If we allow and decriminalize it, uh, does the member opposite, does, not, does she not feel that we will be giving organized crime, gangsters and those that are selling uh, fentanyl-laced marijuana into the hands of children and youth? How can we uh, decriminalize it and it'll still allow our children, our youth and our young population interact with organized crime, sell and deal with them, put their lives at risk and put their lives at risk of, of consuming marijuana that is laced with fentanyl and she very well knows in her riding herself as she has stated earlier the deaths are very high so I ask her how can we open this use without regulating the product and the means by which you get it in the first place. Member for Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Thank you. I thank the member for uh, his question and the opportunity to clarify. I would say two things to that. One is criminalizing simple possession of marijuana, small amounts for personal possession, has not prevented just those kind of effects that we see in our province and in our country. So they, the, 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 it's not natural, it's not logical to link those pieces together. The second thing I would say is to reassure the member and really hope for his support on this motion is that um, to uh, all that we're talking about is about removing the, 
the terrible problem of young uh, adults in Canada having a criminal record for personal possession. It's simply just to get them out of the criminal justice system. It doesn't do anything to, uh, to illegal growers, to illegal gangs, to fentanyl manufacturers. That, that continues to be a criminal action, and that's what our police resources should be focused on. Dealers, organized crime, drugs that are truly killing and harming people, but the individual who has a very small amount of marijuana, if they are intercepted by police, they would no longer face a criminal record. They may well be ticketed, as the Conservatives uh, have proposed, but they would not face a criminal record for the rest of their lives. Good comments. Guess commentary. The Honourable Member for Sherwood Park, Fort Saskatchewan. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank my colleague for her speech. I want to ask her about two issues which, as far as I, I know, haven't been brought up thus far in the debate. I want to ask what she thinks the effect of this uh, motion would be on driving, on uh, marijuana use in driving and how that would affect uh, road safety and, and what concerns she might have around that. The second issue I want to raise is some law enforcement have told me that having marijuana be illegal makes it easier for them to access drug dealers because if they stop someone who's smoking a joint who may have a small amount of marijuana in their possession, it allows them to conduct a search and they may well find substantial amounts of other drugs. So I want, want to hear her comments on those two issues, how, how uh, pr ma maintaining the, the criminal element around marijuana may well improve public safety, at least in those specific ways. The Honourable Member for Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Voting yes to today's NDP motion would allow police resources to be concentrated on true crime in our country and actually getting at the root of, of drugs uh, and uh, violence that actually affects people on the ground. They would have more resources to do roadside checks around who is driving dangerously uh, for any reason, whether that's workplace fatigue or alcohol or anything. Um, and uh, there's, uh, there's, there really is no downside. Again, because the government has indicated that they're already going down this direction, their task force is going to recommend that this be a drug that is allowed to be uh, used and, and, uh, and distributed, then uh, we're simply talking about getting out of the lives of individual young Canadians who will unfairly bear the brunt of a, a drug for which uh, possession and consumption and distribution will be legal in just a matter of years. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Port Moody, Coquitlam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I appreciate uh, my colleagues' uh, great comments uh, on this. And I, I want to know, the, the Liberal members have been raising the issue of resources. I want to ask my colleague, uh, what is the cost of inaction? We've already been waiting uh, seven, seven months or more. Uh, it's not expected that there will be any action before another year. And it may take up to two years, maybe longer, before it's actually a regime is actually implemented. What is the cost to young people, to municipalities, municipal police forces? Uh, what's the cost to them in terms of delay of action or inaction on this issue? Member for Nanaimo, Lady Smith. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Like so many areas where we've had a failure of federal government leadership, whether it's oil spill response, abandoned vessels, in this case, uh, marijuana. Uh, uh, dispensary regulation. I've seen my former colleagues from local government scrambling to fill those holes. It uh, means every community has to figure out their own ad hoc rules. It would be so much better if we saw federal leadership in this area. Um, the, the financial cost, the direct cost, $4 million a year simply in prosecuting small personal possession charges, that's embarrassing really for us in this country in this day and age that money could be spent so much better elsewhere. Um, the cost of criminal records for individuals we've discussed, um, it can really hamper people's time. And I would argue finally uh, for this government, they've got the need to act on the very strong mandate that was given to them by Canadians. And I think voting in favour of this motion would be a, a show of faith in the, their um, commitment to follow through on a campaign promise. Resuming debate.